Hello, everyone. It is Friday, December 10th, and uh, getting down to the last instructional day of this first semester. Next week is finals. Um, and so we have uh, quite a bit of um, responses to go through today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into those and get going for our, our weekly messages here. So let's get going. So first, we're starting off with our shout outs and recognitions. We have a couple here. Uh, first one, and actually there were two of these that went out, and so I just kind of combined them all into one here. But uh, congratulations to Dr. Jeff Morton and the choirs for their polished, joyful and uplifting holiday performances. Uh, we heard that they were really fantastic and we got to see a little bit of them in our office uh, yesterday. So uh, it was pretty nice. Um, this second one was sort of a general overall uh, shout out. It says, I do not have any concerns today, but wanted to thank you for the section in the newsletter that talks of weekly tips and general self-enrichment messages. It's relaxing to read them at times, and we would like to give a shout out to the newsletter team for coming up with them every week. So thank you for that shout out. Uh, and finally, there was one for Marissa Amiskita. She is one of our guidance counselors. Um, and in quote, it said, has been tremendous. She's been there every step of the way to guide us and communicate with teachers, she has demonstrated compassion, empathy, and advocacy for our student and our family during this difficult time. I hope that she can be recognized and commended in some fashion for her exemplary work and dedication to her students. So this is one way in which we're doing that. And I did share these comments with her as well. Um, so thank you for doing that. So moving on to some of our questions and concerns. Um, we First one we have here is, says rumor, uh, heard a rumor that the class schedule might change next semester, starting January of 2022. My student heard that skinny day might be moved back to Monday. Didn't think that type of change would be done mid-year, so thought I'd check. And yes, that is a rumor. Uh, it is not happening next, sem next semester. We're not changing the schedule at all. It is staying the same. But there's definitely a schedule change on the horizon coming up next year because there is this new law that is going into effect in January that says for the following school year, um, no class can start before 8.30 a.m. for high school students. So we are going to need to tweak our calendar or schedules a bit. So there'll be information coming out about that. And the process has already started and going underway. Um, another question or concern was general concern about issues of feedback to students after quizzes, tests, and writing assignments. Realize that this is an ongoing issue and may, many conflicting goals interest. However, we'd like to emphasize that getting a chance to review wrong answers and to fully understand how to get to the right answer is part of the learning process. Totally agree with you here. And so um, again, not, not trying to, to take the other side here, but yeah, that's how we give feedback. That's how students do better. Um, but the, you know, they, again, there are some teachers who, because they're doing common assessments, they don't hand the test back for the students to take home. They do give them this, the test during class to review the tests and answers. They can come back at, um, uh, at tutorial time. They can come back after school if they set a different an appointment with them, uh, but they students do get access to it. So I'm not aware of teachers who were saying, hey, you got you know 10 out of 12 right here. Uh, you, you know, I'm not gonna tell you when you can't look at it, you can't do any of that kind of stuff. If that's going on, yeah, let me know. Or actually I would email the teacher and ask them specifically saying, you know, I heard this was going on. Can you verify that? That's not the practice that I've been hearing. So that would be an unusual thing. Um, so again, they're not giving them the test to keep. They're letting them see the test. They hand it back to the teacher at the end. Um, they can review it at different times if they need to. Uh, I do not know of an instance. So if I'm wrong there, please let me know and I'll, I'll go have a conversation with that teacher and see what's going on. Um, uh, this one said, I'm disappointed that the question I asked about finals two weeks ago has not been addressed. I, I, I did try and address it. I guess I just didn't address it in the way that this person liked, but I can't be the only person concerned about our students' stress level. Uh, that it was a long one. And so um, a couple of points they had in there was they said that uh, the concern that teachers don't have the time to properly give finals and not a good way to assess student understanding. So again, we, you know, to say that no one is concerned about student stress is, is just simply not true. It is something that we look at and simply something that we're doing. One thing I, though, I do have noticed is that there is a, a lot of times that, you know, people are asking us to eliminate stress. <laughs> we can't eliminate stress. Stress is brought in and is an internal thing. There can be external factors that contribute to that. Um, but a lot of times, um, you know, you got to have some sort of stress to get motivated and get up in the morning and that kind of stuff. I'm not saying we want to try and stress our kids out, but, you know, there is this perception that if, if a kid feels stressed, it's a bad thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It is something that, you know, gets kids motivated, gets kids to, to behave in certain ways. If that stress is becoming overwhelming and is paralyzing the student, that is obviously something that we want to look at and address. Now, finals 
has always been a way for us to take a sort of final chunk and look at what students have been doing in the semester and assess have they mastered have they grown have they shown improvement have they shown you know no improvement so it is a chance for us to kind of uh, you know have a big final assessment see where have our kids been how they do and then do we need to work on some of those things next semester so if we just get rid of first semester finals that really does have an impacting on how we do grading because then there are students who rely on that grade to to improve themselves or that they you know they use it to to assess where they are and so it does imp impact that pacing it does impact the second semester finals because if we don't do a first semester final we'd have to do a second semester final that would make that one even twice as stressful because you would then be doing you know having to do something that's that shows growth for the entire year so um again i'm not really sure how other to address that now again going back to some of the concerns here the student the teachers do have two hours uh in that testing period to give a final assessment. So in that regard, nobody does a test that lasts two hours. There are some AP courses that have some longer tests. They usually tend to break those up over a period of time. Um, but it's very rare that someone uses the entire two hours of the period. Um, but they have been prepping and preparing all the way. So, so I'm not quite sure on why you would say that they don't have time to give those tests because they do. That is, that is kind of an expectation that they have some sort of culminating academic activity at the end of each semester. But going back to the, what I said last week, two or two weeks ago, finals does not mean a test. Finals could be a test in, say, math or science or even English, but a lot of times some of those students um, or some of those classes have assessments that are Socratic seminars, that are presentations, that are, are projects, that are reflections. So there's a variety of ways in which teachers can assess a student's growth or mastery of the subject. And it doesn't necessarily mean a memorization test. So now, if you're taking all AP and honors tests or classes, most likely you're gonna have a lot of AP and honors tests for finals. And so again, that that is one of those personal choices and one of the reasons why we talk about trying to, you know, really be thoughtful in the way that you pick classes because, you know, four or five AP and honor courses is a, is a big load for students to take. Um, and that does mean there's going to be a conflict at the end of the semester like that. So again, we do believe, you know, we are concerned about stress. We are doing lots of things to try and alleviate and reduce stress. I'll talk about that in a little bit with our tutorial policy or revised tutorial policy. Um, but again, finals is, is something that we are doing to prepare kids for the next semester, for the next class, to give us a chance to really assess their growth and, and mastery. Um, <clears throat> this one, there was kind of a negative tone to this week's uh, uh, questions and concerns. I think that's because everyone's tired, but this one said, please figure out what's going on with the PTSA. They aren't doing anything for the students. They want to have a talk on menopause. That's ridiculous. How does the benefit, how does that benefit our students at all? It's concerning that they're using parent donated funds for such a thing. Um, so again, this, this statement is a little bit um, hyperbolic. I would say, say they've done nothing for kids is, is, is really doing a disservice to all the great work that our, our PTSA has been doing. Going back to this topic, this was a, a chance, uh, the topic, they are sent out a survey about, um, would you be interested in a, um, in a topic on menopause? Uh, and because that affects every family uh, that goes through here. And so uh, of those who responded, 90% said they would definitely be interested in this type of a survey. So if, if, if it was 90% in the opposite way, they wouldn't be doing the survey, but because there is a group of folks that would like to hear this, they are looking to schedule something like this. One of the thing, one of the mission statements of the PTSA, and I put it in quotes here, says to positively impact the lives of children and families. So it's not just the students, it's also the families. And again, menopause is a, is a big part of life and, and that can affect families in a lot of different ways. And so that's part of the topic of this, this um, this guest speaker, if we're able to finally book them, um, that would actually I think be beneficial to students and to parents about how to how to go about dealing with this natural occurrence, but it can be rather disruptive and and affect the relationships in the family. Um, and again, I talked about I wanted to list some of the things that they have done over the course of the year just to go back to refute that statement of they don't do anything to help students. Um, they have been, you know, using your funds that you're donating to provide grants for classroom supplies and field trips and resources and all those things. So uh, almost every meeting we sit down, there's three to four to five uh, grants that are being read through and accepted. Um, they support some of the clubs that are on campus. They support our departments. They give them money to also buy other things. They have done a food bank since last year that goes towards our students and their families. Uh, they are, they have been and will continue to do some of the PSAT, SAT courses to help students prepare 
uh, for those tests and for that college life. They have the Reflections Art uh, Program where they do contests for students who have, are, you know, who turn in their, their um, artwork, their, their, their dance, their music, that kind of stuff, and, and that helps benefits kids. They also do a lot of volunteer work, whether it's, you know, helping us with things around school when we need some bodies to hand out papers or to help the lines go quicker, or they're helping out in our, in our uh, mandatory tutorial where they're being uh, operating as tutors. And they also put together our grad night party. So again, they are doing a ton of things to, to support our students. Um, if this isn't your cup of tea for this topic, yeah, then, then you, you know, you don't have to go. Um, but it is a very small portion of, of funds that would go towards this. And um, it's something that 90% of the folks who, who responded to that survey said, yeah, this would be a topic that would be helpful to me and my family. So I, th I think PTSA is doing just, just a fine job there. Um, another concern that was listed is about some of the teaching strategies. And specifically, this person said uh, they think there's a re over-reliance on videos. People are using too many videos in class. Uh, they need to rely on the textbook more than they are. Um, and that there should be less technology, more interaction. Um, and, and I will say that, you know, having 90 minute classes, there is something that teachers are trying to do to try and incorporate lots of different strategies, lots of different resources and, and appeal to the different teaching and learn, not teaching, but learning strategies of our students. That's what we call the modalities, whether you're a visual learner or an auditory learner or a, you know, do it and learn kind of person, trying to incorporate all those things in there. So there may be times where they're using things to appeal to one group and then doing something else to appeal to another group. Or also what it's proven when you use multiple modalities and multiple strategies, it reinforces the way that um, the, the, the material gets uh, learned by the students. One fallacy that I just, I really wanna make sure we're, we're, we're pointing out there is a lot of people who refer to, oh, if you're not using the textbook enough, you know, you're not following the curriculum. The textbook is not the curriculum. Textbooks are not the end all be all for learning. They're actually a very fallible, fallible use or resource because they are a, a marketing tool for, for the publishing companies. They do have, they do go out of date quickly. Um, they do have information that is conflicting at times and so, or, or, or changes over time. And so um, the textbook is a resource. It's not the resource. So again, I want to understand that we do teach kids how to use the textbooks. We use parts of the textbook. It's not the only thing that we're going to use in a class though. Um, and, and I am very much aware of, of uh, teachers, not all of them, but a lot of our teachers will incorporate surveys uh, to their students over the course of the semester to get feedback on like, what has been working? What do you want to see more? What do you want to see less of? Now, again, not every teacher does that, but a lot of teachers do. And so there are times where um, they take that feedback, but if maybe you have some feedback you'd like to give to the, to the teacher, that's something you can also do. Um, but I also want to re reiterate that the, it isn't just a solo teacher working alone in their room and picking things on their own. A lot of times uh, we have course alike teams or even small department teams that work together to build things like what are the essential learnings that we want kids to know and be able to do at the end of this class? What is some of the pacing? What is the curriculum? What are the assessments we want to use? So teachers are working together to build this. So when normally when you see teachers doing things, it's because they're using things from other uh, resources from other people and trying to create a more complete picture uh, of that learning and of that class. So um, again, not everything is going to appeal to every student. We are we have a wide variety of kids that we're trying to get to, but we try to incorporate as many as we can uh, and try to to you know build ways in which students can have access to the learning and be able to practice that learning and then be able to master that learning. Um, a couple of questions about winter formal. So I just kind of put it in this question and answer mode here. Um, it said, looking at the permission slip, we see that there'll be food and drinks. Do you know what type of food? Is it a snack or is it a meal? It is snacks um, and there are drinks that will be available. So again, if your kid needs to have a dinner before they go hand, they might want to do that. Or if they can load up on the snacks, they can feel free to do that. Uh, as question number two there, there is no extra cost uh, to the food. It's free. So they can take as much or as little or none of what was there. Um, there is nothing else that is extra uh, that they need to pay for, so they don't need to bring any other money, other, although it's always a good idea to have some sort of money on you when you're out and about. Um, is there a dress code? Yes and no. Um, you know, this is considered a formal dance, uh, you know, not that we're just going to be checking for tuxes and ball gowns and that kind of stuff, um, but we do consider it a more formal dance, so you shouldn't be showing up in shorts and a t-shirt or, you know, a onesie pajama kind of thing. This is a more formal dance, so we do ask that people do that, and also there are things that are appropriate for school, so uh, those rules also apply, so nothing that is as, you know, obscene or vulgar or offensive words on it, uh, nothing that would be drug or alcohol related, that kind of stuff. Um, and then it says, will students be required to wear masks? Absolutely. Even when they're dancing, 
uh, except the only time when they don't need to wear the mask is when they're eating or drinking. Um, so we will be following those. That's our rule as well as the rule of Villa Ragusa uh, where the, the event is being held. So I hope that answers those questions for you. Um, there was a question or more a statement. Pr please preserve tutorial time. Kids depend on tutorial time to communicate with teachers and the tutorial time has been used for other purposes this school year. Um, and so again, I think this is coming up because we've been talking about tutorial and having that tutorial survey. Um, but yet, you know, the, the way we actually came up with tutorial was when we looked at, we said, how can we build some extra time into the day so that kids could have these times? So we find tutorial to be extremely important. That's why we're trying to uh, improve it. Um, but really what we did is we took the rally schedule and just took the word rally off, put the word tutorial on. So that's really what this is. So originally rallies were first, tutorials came second. So we do have these school-wide campus rallies that we do four or five times a year. That definitely happens. Um, tutorials happen three times a week when there aren't a rally or some other thing going on. We do advisories and we use 10 of those advisories throughout the year for those tutorial periods to run advisories. So again, maybe once a month for the advisories. The rest of the time, we're trying to have two to three uh, tutorials. Most times it's three tutorials in a week. Um, you know, We do run drills and, and some other things sometimes during tutorial because it doesn't interrupt the instruction. So if we don't use tutorial for a rally or so sort of use it for or for advisory or use it for a drill, then we're taking time out of the course instruction and that doesn't actually make sense to anybody. So yes, that tutorial time can be used in a variety of ways. Um, and again, in, in a recent survey too, the one that we just did, um, there was a strong connection between those people who didn't want to see advisories during tutorial um, and not wanting to have, provide mental health uh, or self-care during a uh, tutorial. So really, yes, that's that, that small group of people, the 20 to 30% of the respondents, they've been kind of saying, yeah, we, we don't want advisory because we don't want anything else in tutorial other than academics. Um, again, they're 70 to 80% do want mental health. They do like the advisories. When we've done surveys in the past, there's been a large number of students in our school and across the district that have really found uh, that the tutorials are important or the advisory is important. Um, and so again, the advisories as well as tutorial as well as rallies are uh, important components of our healthy school, whether we're building school community, building uh, spirit, you know, having some fun, blowing off some steam, having kids learn things about themselves and others. Those are all sort of that's teaching the whole student. Um, and when we, you know, people get concerned when we teach too much academics, and that it just sort of brings that stress, like talking back to the, the finals part there that, you know, the stress of all that. Again, kids do need breaks. Kids do need some things that, that can build and expand their experiences. And that's what we're hoping to do with advisories and rallies and that kind of thing. So we are gonna keep tutorial time. We're not getting rid of it. Um, and so that might be a good reason for us to talk about sort of our revised tutorial policy. So based on those surveys that we sent to students, staff um, and parents, we've come up with some new things. Now, again, the idea was we, do, we don't have the ability to add or delete or lengthen or shorten or move days for tutorials, any of that stuff. We have to stay with the structure of tutorials, but within that structure, what are some of the things that we can do? And again, in those surveys, we had about 70 to 80% of those responding who said, please put in some sort of self-care or mental health for our students. That, that helps them get breaks, it helps them refresh, it helps them do better in their learning. We will be providing students and teachers with some resources on how to you know, do affirmations or breathing techniques or grounding techniques. Basically, our mental health team has put together a poster their kids can go and scan a QR code and it takes them to one of these things and it walks them through how to do these. So it's sort of self-guided self-care or, or mental wellness. Um, so all these different subjects, a bunch of them are in there. We're also going to be doing, uh, there was, there was uh, um, some uh, favor for trying to use alternative sources for um, for uh, tutorial and not just have everybody in the classroom. So this way, some of the, you know some of the kids who maybe really need to talk to the teachers aren't being boxed out by others who might just be in the room. And so we're going to try and do some guest speakers, uh, motivational speaker kinds of things, maybe career stuff, maybe college stuff during tutorial that students can sign up for. It'll be a limited sign up, um, and that some of those students though can sign up and go to these other resources. So there'll be a, a calendar coming out about that. Um, because again, not every single student needs help at that exact moment with content or with their homework. So allowing for some of these alternatives will, you know, will help spread out some of the attention for the teachers. It will also help some of the students, you know, get what they need to feel healthy and feel, you know, comfortable or secure in what they're doing. Uh, and I will be posting that new policy and sending it home uh, here fairly soon. So uh, we're just getting a few tweaks on it, but it's going to be going out pretty soon here. 
Um, finally, we, you know, we just had this issue where we had um, a police presence on campus, and so I wanted to kind of quickly review that. Um, as my email mentioned, we did have a, a rather vague and anonymous uh, email that, that had some threatening sounding things in it. But again, we, you know, when we say it's, it's vague and it's anonymous, it means we don't know who it came from. You know, it's not referencing a specific time or place or method or, or, or person. Um, it just kind of says something that is meant to kind of get us going and get us, you know, nervous. And so you know, I don't I don't share the whole contents of the email because sometimes there are things in there that might, you know, be confidential or might be something that we don't want to have put out there. But again, our point was to try and get this information, let you know that, hey, we're going to have police on campus because we're trying to check this out and see what's going on. Some people said, well, you should have let us know more so we could have known whether to pull our kid or not you this, this email that we sent home that that's your message of like hey if you're not feeling comfortable with what i'm saying you know you, you have the right to pull your kid um i'm not though going to say shut down school over something that could turn out to be nothing um but i am you know if this had been something police would have told us to go into a lockdown we would have gone into a lockdown we would have gone through that whole procedure so we're not going to like if, if the threat had come through saying at 10 o'clock this is going to happen on this part of the campus and these are the people i'm going to be looking for yeah, I mean, we would have shut things down. There would have been, you would have been asked to come get your kids. That is not what we received. It was really more of just a general kind of, but we actually determined later to be some sort of a response or a prank to that email I had sent out earlier um, that had said, you know, here's how we deal with, with threats and that kind of stuff when we take them seriously. And so again, we, we're living up to our word there that we, you know, we take everything seriously and we will continue to take it seriously until it's resolved, even if it's nothing, right? And so in this case, we didn't see anything coming up. Uh, we are investigating that source of the email, though. So there are ways to try and track and get subpoenas and stuff. So the police are trying to look that. So because uh, obviously that person um, really shouldn't be sending those kinds of, uh, of emails. And so we're going to try and, and follow up and see if there's any follow up that we need to do with that particular individual, whether they're connected to our campus or not. Um, but again, you know, I know that can be alarming, especially with the stuff I just wrote out about Oxford. But again, we want to make sure we're doing everything to keep our kids and our staff safe. Um, we also try not to panic people. We, you know, but again, we work with the police in these cases and they will dictate to us whether, hey, let's handle it this way, let's handle it that way. How do we want to handle this? So there's a lot of different ways. But if it was a true emergency where they were totally concerned, they would have shut the campus down and we would have gone into lockdown and then we would have started a whole different procedure. That's not the situation we had. Uh, but again, I thank everybody for their questions. I thank everybody how seriously they took it. Uh, and, and again, thankfully, Nothing came about in regards to this one, uh, but again, we are still investigating and hopefully we'll be able to get to the bottom of it. Uh, that brings us back to finals. So again, we have finals next week. This is the schedule if you haven't seen it. A uh, couple questions, quick things about uh, enrichment period. As you see, there's a note there at the bottom. Enrichment time is flexible. It's not mandatory. Um, students don't have to show up at that period. You know, but teachers might be available, might be saying, hey, come to my class to make up this work or get some extra time. Please have your students check with the teacher to see what they're going to be doing. Our teachers will be on campus, but they may be in meetings. They may be grading other things. They may be doing different things and they may not be holding specific enrichment activities, but there are times for that. So again, you can see enrichment at the beginning of the end of the day. Uh, we do have brunch to start the day and, and finals don't start till nine o'clock. Again, that was something we heard loud and clear from everybody saying, please don't start finals before 9 a.m. Our finals are for two hours and there's a lunch break. So again, it's part of that free lunch program. Kids can either go off campus and get something or they can cut, stay with us. Uh, and then we have the periods at the end of the day. The only day we don't have two period two finals is on Thursday. That's where we just have that one. Then Friday, your students have the day off and we have a teacher work day uh, and that starts our break. And there's no other school until uh, classes don't start up again until January 3rd. So. We'll see at that point. Uh, I do also want to put a, a quick word in again that we are doing that holiday food service, where if you come to any of these locations, the Cupertino, Fremont, or Homestead High Schools, um, on Thursday, December 16th, between 11.30 and 12.30, um, this is only for our current students, uh, so you need to show some ID. Um, but you come in, you'll get uh, 14 days worth of breakfast and lunch for the students as part of that free meal program. So if that's something that's important to you, please come by. Um, again, you can be a Homestead student and go to the Cupertino or Fremont sites. Uh, you just have to make sure you have that uh, valid ID from this year. So hopefully everyone gets a chance to, to go through there and, and really appreciate uh, our cafeteria staff doing the work to make that happen for our families. Um, just so you know, I am going to stop the survey this week. I'm not going to take any more um, responses after today. Um, uh, you know, and again, I'm, gonna, I'm in the process of doing a new one and getting that out for you next year. Um, so we're going to take a little break until then. 
Um, but I really have appreciated hearing from everybody, whether it's the shout outs or the questions or the ideas. It's been a lot of, it's been very helpful for me. I hope that's been helpful for you too. We've had to over two, actually not over, we've had 209 exactly responses this semester. Uh, so that's awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, so as I said, I'll be revising and redoing here soon. All right, everyone have a great day. This one was a little bit longer, but you saw there's a lot more questions. So hopefully you stayed with us through the whole time. Um, you have a great weekend and we'll see you during finals week. Take care.